Question sixty one. The nurse in charge must monitor a patient receiving chloramphenicol for adverse drug reaction. What is the most toxic reaction to chloramphenicol? A lethal arrhythmias. B malignant hypertension. C status epilepticus. D bone marrow suppression. And D explanation: the most toxic reaction of chloramphenicol is bone marrow suppression. Chloramphenicol is not known to cause lethal arrhythmias, malignant hypertension, or status epilepticus. Question sixty-two: a female patient is diagnosed with deep vein. Thrombosis. Which nursing diagnosis should receive highest priority at this time? A. Impaired gas exchanges related to increased blood flow. B. Fluid volume excess related to peripheral vascular disease. C. Risks for injury related to edema. D. Altered peripheral tissue perfusion related to venous congestion. Answer D. Explanation: Altered peripheral tissue perfusion related to venous congestion takes highest priority because venous inflammation and clot formation impede blood flow in a patient with deep vein thrombosis. Option A is incorrect because impaired gas exchange is related to decreased, not increased blood flow. Option B is inappropriate because no evidence suggests that this patient had a fluid volume excess. Option C may be warranted, but is secondary to altered tissue perfusion. Question sixty-three: When positioned properly, the tip of a central venous catheter should lie in the a superior vena cava, b basically cavin. C. Jugular vein. D. Subclavian vein. Answer A. Explanation: When the central venous catheter is positioned correctly, its tip lies in the superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, or the right atrium, that is, in central venous circulation. Blood flows unimpeded around the tip, allowing the rapid infusion of large amounts of fluid directly into circulation. The basilica, jugular, and subclavian veins are common insertion signs for central venous catheters. Question sixty-four: Nurse Nikki is revising a client's care plan. During which step of the nursing process does such revisions take place? A. Assessment. B. Planning. C. Implementation. D. Evaluation. Answer D. Explanation. During the evaluation step of the nursing process, the nurse determines whether the goals established in the care plan have been achieved, and evaluates the success of the plan. If a goal is unmet or partially met, the nurse re-examines the data and revises the plan. Assessment involves data collection. Planning involves setting priorities, establishing goals, and selecting appropriate interventions. Question sixty-five: A sixty-five-year-old female who has diabetes mellitus and has sustained a large laceration on her left wrist asks the nurse, "How long will it take for my scars to disappear?" Which statement would be the nurse's best response? A. The contraction phase of wound healing can take two to three years. B. Wound healing is very individual, but within four months the scar should fade. C. With the history and the type of location of the injury, it's hard to say. D. If you don't develop an infection, the wound should heal any time between one and three years from now.
Answer C. Explanation. Wound healing in a client with diabetes will be delayed. Providing the client with a time frame could give the client false information. Question 66. One aspect of implementation related to drug therapy is A. Developing a content outline B. Documenting drugs given C. Establishing outcome criteria D. Setting realistic client goals Answer B. Explanation Although documentation isn't a step in the nursing process, the nurse is legally required to document activities related to drug therapy, including the time of administration, the quantity, and the client's reaction. Developing a content outline, establishing outcome criteria, and setting realistic client goals are part of planning rather than implementation. Question 67. A female client is readmitted to the facility with a warm, tender, reddened area on a right calf. Which contributing factor would the nurse recognize as most important? A. A history of increased aspirin use. B. Recent pelvic surgery. C. An active daily walking program. D. A history of diabetes. Answer B. Explanation. The client shows signs of deep vein thrombosis DVT. The pelvic area is rich in blood supply and thromboflabitis of the deep vein is associated with pelvic surgery. Aspirin, an anti blighted agent, and an active walking program help decrease the client's risk of DVT. In general, diabetes is a contributing factor associated with peripheral vascular disease. Question 68. Which intervention should the nurse in charge try first for clients that exhibit signs of sleep disturbance? A. Administer sleeping medication before bedtime. B. Ask the client each morning to describe the quantity of sleep during the previous night. C. Teach the client relaxation techniques such as guided imaginary medication and progressive muscle relaxation. D. Provide the client with normal sleep aids such as pillows, back rubs and snacks. Answer D. Explanation. The nurse should begin with a simplest intervention, such as pillows or snacks, before interventions that require greater skill, such as relaxation techniques. Sleep medication should be avoided whenever possible. At some point, the nurse should do a thorough sleep assessment, especially if common sense interventions fail. Question 69. While examining a client's leg, the nurse notes an open ulceration with visible granulation tissue in the wound. Until a wound specialist can be contracted, which type of dressings is most appropriate for the nurse in charge to apply? A. Dry sterile dressing. B. Sterile petroleum gauze. C. Moist sterile saline gauze. D. Providone iodine soaked. Answer C. Explanation. Moist, sterile saline dressing support would heal and are cost effective. Dry sterile dressings adhere to the wound and rebind the tissue when removed. Petroleum supports healing but is expensive. Povidone iodine can irritate epithelial cells, so it shouldn't be left on an open wound. Question 70. Male client in a behavioral health facility receives a 30-minute psychotherapy session and provider uses a current procedure terminology CPT code that builds for a 50-minute session. 
under the False Claims Act, such as illegal behavior, is known as a unbundling, b overbilling, c upcoding, d misrepresentation. Answer C. Explanation. Upcoding is the practice of using a CPT code that's reimbursed in a higher rate than the code for the service actually provided. Unbundling, overbilling, and misrepresentation aren't the terms used for this illegal practice. Thank you for watching.